One of the closest allies of Adolf Hitler was the fascist dictator of Italy, Benito Mussolini. Mussolini and Hitler formed a tight friendship and together united their nations under the Axis alliance during the Second World War. Mussolini was seen as a figure of hatred alongside Hitler by the Allies, but he met his end in brutal scenes following his execution. The images of the former dictator's body hanging upside down at a service station in Milan, being spat at, stoned at and abused by the crowd, showed the upset within Italy at Mussolini. He became incredibly powerful, but as with a number of infamous politicians, he had a number of dark secrets that were covered up by his government to protect his reputation and legacy. Mussolini was known for having a number of mistresses, but what wasn't as well known is that before he married Rochelle Guidi, his wife who bore him five children, he was married before and allegedly had bore a son. However, this first wife and subsequent child, a boy named after its father, met a horrific end. The story of this child is a tragic one and it's one of neglect, denial and subsequent alleged killing and execution. Join us today as we look at the brutal execution of Benito Mussolini Jr, Mussolini's son. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Benito Mussolini became Prime Minister of Italy following his march on Rome in 1922 and served until he was deposed in 1943. His early political ideas were heavily influenced by his father who was a socialist and he would work with his blacksmith father and talk about politics and ideas. He was then sent to a boarding school which was run by monks and it was noted that as a student here he was violent and also defiant despite being shy. He eventually achieved good grades and qualified as a schoolmaster in 1901 but in 1902 he then left and lived in Switzerland to avoid being drafted into compulsory military service. Whilst here he worked in different jobs in different cities, such as Geneva and Bern, but he could not settle. But here it was where he began to delve deeper into political philosophy, and he began to learn the importance of direct action, violence and strikes to help overthrow democratic systems. Whilst in Switzerland he became known to different Italian social groups, was involved in writing speeches and also organising meetings. He began to serve as the secretary of the Italian Workers' Union and was even introduced to Lenin at one point. But he was a troublemaker in Switzerland, being arrested for advocating violent strikes and was then deported back to Italy where he then went back to Switzerland. He studied at university but in December 1904 he went back to Italy as he had previously been sentenced in absentia for avoiding military service and for desertion, but at the time there was an amnesty for the crime. He continued teaching, but in 1909 he left Italy to take a job as a secretary in Trento, which was within the Austro-Hungarian Empire at the time. He was also doing other jobs for local socialist governments and their newspaper. It was in Trento, in a village near, that Benito Mussolini's first wife, Ida Dalsa, was born. She was born in Sopra Monte and was well thought of in the local area, being the daughter of the town's mayor. She went to France, in particular Paris, to study, but when she came back, she opened up a French-style beauty salon in Milan. It's not known whether Ida Dolce and Mussolini first met when he was in Trento, where he found work as a journalist in 1909, or whether the two met when they were in Milan, where he moved later on. In 1912, Mussolini became the editor of Avanti, an Italian Socialist Party newspaper, and he was involved with the newspaper for a couple of years before the outbreak of the First World War. He split then with the party, due to whether the country should be involved in the war or not, and Mussolini favoured the Italian involvement. He resigned from Avanti over this, and then began to start his own newspaper, named The People of Italy. But at this time he began to become romantically involved with Ida Dolsa, whose beauty salon attracted many wealthy Milan women to visit. It's unknown how they first met, but when they first started their relationship, she gave Mussolini money and financial help to help him fund his newspaper and political activity. She worked in her salon, but gave Mussolini money. It's said that Dolsa even may have pawned her jewellery to give Mussolini money that he needed to start his new enterprise, and she fell so hard for him, she sold her beauty salon so he could continue the newspaper. The pair were allegedly married in 1914, but in 1915, Ida Dolce then gave birth to a son named Benito Albino Mussolini. This child would go on to have a miserable life and would be killed upon the orders of his father, 
who was nowhere to be seen. But despite being married to Ida Dalsa, Mussolini was known to have had a long-term mistress at the time. Their marriage did not last long, and even before the child was born, Mussolini had married Rochelle Guidi, his mistress, who would later go on to give birth to a number of his children. But an edict from the city of Milan at the time did denote and state that Mussolini must have made payments in maintenance for the child to his wife Ida Dolsa. But the child bearing Mussolini's name was forgotten about and neglected, never being fully accepted by his father. When Italy entered the First World War, Mussolini entered the army. Following the war, he returned to politics and founded the National Fascist Party in 1921, before being elected to the Italian Parliament. The following year, he led 25,000 paramilitary black shirts in the march on Rome to force the king to appoint him as the prime minister, and following this, he was very much in power. It was key for him to establish himself as a clean but powerful leader with no scandal, and the news that Mussolini had already been married and had not divorced his first wife before marrying his second could have destroyed his early reign as prime minister and dictator. He was technically a bigamist and also a father who neglected his child, and this would not have sat favourably with the Italian people, but Ida Dolsa did not remain quiet. Once Mussolini was in power, she was placed under close watch and surveillance by the police, and even her child Benito was followed by the police. They tracked down all of the paper evidence of their marriage and relationship, and destroyed all of the paperwork to ensure that nothing could haunt Mussolini. But his first wife continued to claim that she was the dictator's rightful wife, and she denounced Mussolini as being a traitor. She claimed that during his time in Milan, he had been taking bribes from the French government to help campaign for the involvement of a neutral Italy in the war, in the hope that Italy would support the French. This would have made Mussolini a traitor for taking money from the enemy of the First World War, but outraged by this, the dictator of Italy was furious. Benito Mussolini Jr. was even followed, and along with his mother's, their birth certificates were even destroyed. But a number of documents were not ruined, including one in which Mussolini in 1915 acknowledged Dulcer as his wife and Benito Jr. as his son. He also in 1916, in a document, repeated his acknowledgement and said he would help with financial support. But when he came into power, he continued to deny the existence of his son and his first wife. Dulcer continued to push fascist officials to learn of her story, but in 1926 she was arrested and was locked up. It was said she was abducted upon the orders of Mussolini, was beaten, was then forced into a straitjacket and declared insane by doctors. She spent the rest of her life in a number of mental hospitals and units before she died, it's suspected of a brain hemorrhage. By doing this, Mussolini attempted to silence his ex-wife and eventually got what he wanted when she died in 1937. However, what happened to Benito Mussolini Jr.? Well, he too was abducted by Mussolini's officials and at a young age was told his mother was dead. In 1931, he was adopted as an orphan at the age of 15 by the fascist ex-police chief of Sopramonte. It's assumed that within this household, Mussolini could have controlled the care of his son. He had been sent to a number of boarding schools, but the child knew who his father was and was banned from referring to Mussolini as his father was then ordered to change his name to Bernardi. But the death of Benito Mussolini Jr. is incredibly sad, was obviously orchestrated by his father and his government, and it could be seen as an organised execution. When Benito Albino Mussolini was old enough, he enrolled in the Italian Royal Navy, and while serving, remained under close surveillance by government officials. It's assumed that he did serve in the Second World War on ships in some capacity, but he continued to tell people and claim he was the son of Mussolini. Because of this, he was seen as dangerous, and shortly after seeing service, he was arrested and then was sent, like his mother, to a mental hospital. It's clear that there was nothing psychiatrically wrong with Benito Mussolini Jr., and in fact he was just telling the truth that his father, the leader of Italy, was a bigamist and that he was his son. But Mussolini, to eliminate the threat of people knowing about his son, silenced him by institutionalising him. He was held inside of an asylum in Milan, and it was here where he was brutally killed by doctors inside. It's clear that the doctors must have been under orders to kill Benito Mussolini Jr., the son of the dictator. The fascist government must have passed instruction for him to be killed, and there are different accounts as to what happened. 
It's claimed by some accounts that the son of the dictator was killed at the age of 26 in July 1942 by coma-inducing injections. With this, he was practically just given medication in the form of a lethal injection that killed him, sending him to sleep. But there are other sources that document that he was killed from a number of electric shock treatments that he was given, his body being given shock treatment whilst inside the institution. It's considered that his death must have been organised in an attempt to erase him from history, and the organisation of it runs parallel as if it was an organised execution. If this is the case, Mussolini, the dictator of Italy, happily ordered the execution of his own son, and following his death, he was buried in an unmarked grave. Interestingly, the downfall of Mussolini would come not too long after the death of his firstborn son. In July 1943, a year after Benito Mussolini Jr.'s death, his father would be arrested and deposed initially. The tragic story of Mussolini's first wife and son shows us how ruthless and brutal the dictator of Italy could be, and also how he would stop at nothing to ensure the public did not know about his first marriage, which could have caused many to dissent against him. He technically was a bigamist and a father who abandoned his child, but ultimately he would in a sense organise the executions in the medical facility of his own son and his first wife. The stories of Ida Dolsa and Benito Albino Mussolini need to be told. They are forgotten victims of the man who was in the pocket of Adolf Hitler during the Second World War. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.